Well, hello and welcome to the PHP of Booker. That would be Perez. What's going on, my man? Oh my God. Too much to talk about this week. A lot. And exhausting, unfortunately. <laughs> Prepare yourselves. A draining amount of Kanye West to get to, but he continues to be actually... I'm getting ahead of myself. Somebody gave me a psychological term that people with extreme narcissistic behavior uh, engage in this. It's called hoovering. Have you heard of hoovering. this before? No. They basically just like suck up through their toxic ways, all the oxygen in the room and just create drama to like force the people that are their targets to be a part of their universe, even if that person has moved on and wants nothing to do with them anymore. So that's hmm. what it feels like with Kanye. There's a lot of Kanye to get to. Of course, we're also going to be talking about Kim and Pete, uh, Cardi B's diva ways, a troubling and unfortunate incident with Naomi Osaka, the tennis player at a tournament. Uh, the Jesse Smollett verdict. Uh, Khloe Kardashian has a new man. And on top of that, wow. at the very end of our show, an interview with Dr. Drew, Dr. Drew Pinsky of Loveline fame, teen mom, celebrity rehab. And yes, we talk about Kanye with Dr. Drew. We talk about Demi Lovato with Dr. Drew and so much more. So that will be at the end after the calls. Oh, okay. How are you? <laughs> Very good. Thank you. It sounds like you've uh, got a lot, been doing a lot and learned a lot. So I'm excited to hear what's going to come out of your head today. Yes. Uh, first of all, I forgot to ask you about this last week and I'm genuinely curious. Well, A, did you go and B, what are your brief thoughts? But did you make it to the Justin Bieber concert? I didn't go. My oh, girlfriend you... was sick. I didn't oh. go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A oh, bummer. Well, I don't even know if I can make it happen, but I somehow stumbled upon videos of the Justice Tour on YouTube. Mm -hmm. I started watching and I'm like, I got to stop watching because this looks really good. Like, I need to go see Justin Bieber in concert now. Huh, good. So I've got to find a way to get free tickets because I'm not going to pay. I'm not paying for Justin <laughs> Bieber tickets, but... <laughs> If I got free tickets, I would go. Um, so there's that. But you and I did meet up and we um, both went to the Imagine Dragons concert, mm -hmm. which I took my children to because my kids literally know the lyrics to so many of their songs verbatim. Yeah. You know, without having to read them. They, they were, and there were so many kids at the Imagine Dragons concert, too. They appeal to young people, which actually bodes really well for their longevity, that yeah. they really cross generations. They really do. I mean, it was, you know, old people to young people. It's really, oh, that's the power of hits. That's what hits do. And they have a lot of them. So they do. It was a good they, show. It was a great show. It was, I felt like a religious experience or a spiritual. It was just, yeah. it was awesome. So glad I went. All right. I'm just going to get right to it because there's so much show. But before we get to it, there's a new sponsor that I need you guys to support. I need you guys to check out, not just because you would be helping us, but you would be helping yourself. I mean, hello, it's mid-March already and we're this close to summer. And if you want your summer body, we've got something that's gonna really help you, but not even if, you know, if that's not important to you, just to be healthier, that's important. Have you guys heard of low FODMAP? I haven't. Well, I, had, I, I had not heard of, low FODMAP either. It's going to be the next big craze in fitness, wellness, nutrition. Mm -hmm. It's a way of eating that's good for your gut. Mm. You know, it's, it's um, this company that we're working with, Belly Welly, Belly Welly, mm -hmm. um, they created these bars, brownies, that have all of these probiotics in them. And mm. probiotics have been proven to be so good for your gut, for, for your whole well-being. Uh, and hello, like 
a brownie for breakfast that's healthy. That sounds good to me. Uh, these have 500 million CFU probiotics per bar. They're gluten-free. They're vegan. They are the first soft-baked bar that is certified low FODMAP. Uh, so if you've got gut issues or just want to be healthier, what Belly Welly is for you. Go to bellywelly.com. That's B E L L I W E L L I.com and use code Perez30 to unlock a 30% discount. That's bellywelly.com and use code Perez30. Please check them out. Okay. Wow, I want some Belly Welly bars myself. I know my girlfriend could use those big time. Oh yeah, she really could. She has digestion problems, so that's uh, she's always loading down on yogurt and things that have all of those uh, those things. So great, good. Send me some belly welly. All right, let's get right to Kanye. First, I'm gonna make what I think is a really equal comparison. Okay, I view what's going on with Kanye West right now in a similar light to what was going on in America with Donald Trump for the four years of his presidency. Donald Trump, in my opinion, and you know, we don't really get political here. In my opinion, Donald Trump was bad for America, but he was good for my business. Like I was literally talking about Trump every single day. He was mm -hmm. sucking the oxygen in the room, all of it. And we were all choking for air. But while Donald Trump was good for business, I'm genuinely happy that he's no longer president. So Kanye has been giving me a lot of material. He's been name checking me yeah, repeatedly. Yeah. In the last seven days, two days in a row, he mentioned me and you know, that's good for me. It gives me clout, relevancy, attention, things I love, things sure. I need, I need. But, and I'm being very serious here. I would rather Kanye be better, get better, do better, and not mention me. Because I don't wanna see this man struggling and hurting himself and hurting others. And that's what I think he's doing. I mean, even literally, moments before we started this podcast he was at it again on instagram you probably didn't even see this no i woke up minutes before this podcast <laughs> you know you're 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 um a bit of an asshole and by a bit i mean a lot mm -hmm. even for assholes there are some things you just don't do, right? In the hmm. asshole dictionary or the asshole role, role right. book. Well, I don't know if I'm an asshole. I'm just a realist. Fine. Whatever you are. Here's what Kanye did this morning. Do you think it's appropriate? Kanye was mocking Pete Davidson's sobriety and attacking him for his past substance abuse issues. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts? My thoughts are always the same. I, I look this hoovering that you're talking about. I just refuse not to participate. I don't follow Kanye West. I don't follow Pete Davidson. I, you know, I'm mildly amused by the idiot things that go on between the two of them. I think they both are acting like, you know, imbeciles at times. Um, so I don't really invest a lot of emotion into it. And I think the people that do shouldn't. So and that's I, well, the people that, the people that do, that's an interesting point that you brought up, because if you look at his comments section, it's over. But you know, I don't. Yeah. No, I'm saying if, okay, mm -hmm. not when, mm -hmm. if you look at his comment section, you see all of these people that are enabling co-signing this behavior because they might call himself themselves Kanye fans, but they care more about this entertainment that he's providing them right. now. Right. And like, even you probably did not see this either. Last night, minutes before I went to bed, I saw, and that actually has not gone viral yet. It'll probably, go, this is how the news cycle works. It'll probably go viral today. Mm -hmm. There was a video of Kanye having, I don't, I don't want to, phrase it incorrectly 
because the video cut out at a certain point and I only saw one point of view, but Kanye mm -hmm. was arriving at the airport and got into a heated exchange with a paparazzo. Ah. Uh who was not even antagonizing him, to be honest. Well, that you saw. Fine. You, you didn't see the entire, I, you know, you can't possibly say you saw every All moment the, of the exchange. What was caught on film? Well, it. what triggered Kanye from what I saw was, come on, Kanye, we just want to chat. And Kanye yeah. did not want to talk to the power. And that set him off yeah. to the point that he either hit the paparazzo dude or smacked the camera outside of him and... This is why it's like so concerning. He even gave out his number. He, he literally said, not his phone number, but he said, what you're trying to do is trying to agitate me so I pay you, so I do something and pay you $250,000 to make this go away. And when he said that, that just left such a sour taste in my mouth because that echoed something that he told comedian D.L. Hewley a few days ago. I genuinely have a soft spot for Kanye, like I do the Kardashians, or like I do anybody that's struggling and in pain. I don't want to see people genuinely hurting, but Kanye really has convinced himself that his money lets him do whatever he wants, including physically having inappropriate things. Exchanges. Exchanges. Yeah. Okay, but... People. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I do get that, but they're also the slime of the earth most of the time and they do get in your personal space and it's, they, I, you know, look, if they, do, they do touch you, they do, you know, that's no excuse to hit anybody or like have to threaten them with, you know, I'm going to have to, you know, take a swing that'll cost me 250 bucks, 250,000 bucks if you don't get out of my face. But I've been there. I understand it. I These get, people are. I get it too, awful. but you should not respond physically. I respond think respond any way you want. I mean, you know, Actually, do you? Oh my god! Oh my god! Mm -hmm. I hope I don't. I don't. I hope I don't out my source. But don't make this a clip. This is an exclusive for our podcast viewers and listeners. One of these things I don't see is that bad. But I got exclusive information about Kanye that some people close to him find concerning. <laughs> I find it peculiar. Um, and I'll tell you the two things that he's been doing that's, that, that some people are like, why? First, he's been taking Ubers all over Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. I mean, Kanye can afford a car and driver, but he's taking Ubers. Um, Okay, whatever. And secondly, and actually I, I noticed this too when I saw the paparazzi video at LAX, mm -hmm. he's been flying commercial a lot and everywhere, which that I think is fiscally responsible and a good thing. Sure, private jets are not cheap. I know. He moves a lot, he moves around a lot. First class is okay, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's, it's not terrible up there. But what was bizarre was I don't know if you're familiar with how like the super rich people handle LAX, but they have this new service for the right, really yeah. wealthy. And he wasn't even taking that. Like he was coming out the normal way where all the normal people come out. Oh, so, look, that tells me nothing except for Kanye loves Listen, all I'm attention. saying that was that, okay, there you go. All right, <laughs> That's fine. it. That's all I'm going to say. He loves attention. And if it's, you know, from one person that notices him and some sort of exchange could get going that gives him that, you know, that ego boost. He's down for it. That's not shocking to me. It just isn't. That was just to give you a little bit of insider information. And mm -hmm. also, I need to thank our wonderful viewers and listeners who reminded me of you being wrong. <laughs> and I, this should be great. When, what are we talking about here? I just had forgotten about it because my brain was on Kanye overload. Uh -huh. We were talking about that one song and you were saying that it wasn't threatening Pete Davidson. Well, I had forgotten about the other song where yeah. he literally name checks Pete Davidson. But we weren't and, talking about that song. How the hell am I wrong when we're not talking about that? We weren't well, talking just, about that. I just had to remind you of the other song. I know the other song. And you didn't ask me if I would think as a judge that could be admissible in court. 
I think that could be. He okay. actually says his name. Yes. He actually says that he's going to do something to him. Yes. So Terrific. how am I wrong? Uh, well, because you, we did not talk. You, you, that so all we didn't talk about something, but I'm wrong about it because we yes. didn't talk about it. Yes, oh, okay. That makes wrong. a ton of sense. <laughs> anyway. Listen, is Eminem, is Eminem guilty of, uh, of all of this uh, stuff that he was talking about Kim all these years with those if threats? She went, if she went to court and told a judge that she was, was concerned for her safety i would think a mm. judge would definitely be yeah. mindful of that yeah, anyways I, look yeah i don't i wasn't wrong if you could pinpoint where i was wrong in that fine i'll be wrong but i wasn't Any, wrong <laughs> anyways speaking of that one song easy where kanye literally rapped god saved me from the crash so i can beat pete davidson's ass mm -hmm. he released a music video for that one as well and in this second music video, Pete Davidson is featured yet again in it. And, you know, Kanye's got an obsession with Pete that many think is unhealthy. And not only that, he has this obsession. He just with has a foil. That's his thing. He likes having a foil. Pete is his foil. Pete is an active participant. No, in he's this. not. He's, Pete yes, he is. Social he's social media. Okay, then he gets on his friend's social media this week and responds to all of this Kanye stuff. And plus, you don't know what's going on with Pete, how many conversations he's had with Kanye or what's happened he, in person via, you don't know. You just don't know. Well, you don't know either. I, I'm not claiming to. Okay, well, what I do know is Pete Davidson doesn't have social media and Kanye does. And Kanye has literally. <laughs> it's like, you're not, you're, you can't, you can't communicate unless you don't have social, social media. That's insane. What he can't use no, his, you're not his letting mouth and his words. <laughs> okay. Kanye, but it's an insane thought. What's an, you didn't even let me finish my thought. Go Kanye ahead, finish your keeps thought. battling this foolish battle through social media when Pete Davidson isn't even on social media. Okay. Well, that you know, he's picked a fight with someone that doesn't want to participate. Like I said, he has a foil. It's part of what's making all of you buffoons follow this story day after day after day. It's like who cares? Don't call them buffoons because they're a buffoons. Lot of our you people are buff and listeners Fine. Are, are buffoons. <laughs> Buffoon. Anybody <sighs> that invests this much time into this soap opera, it is so arbitrary, and it's just you taking the bait. I mean, unless you know what it is. I know what it is. It's a person seeking attention and he's getting it. Why? Because he's hoovering it from you, as you said. Yes. So it is what it is. It's buffoonery. But not the people that follow it. Yes, the people that follow it really probably should get a job. Well, or something. it's not buffoonery for everybody. This does impact his family, his mother of his children and they're his children. this is their kardashians this is their family business this is what they do this is how they make money clicks people talking about them online exchanges i get that this is it, their business yes it, it affects it in a good way do you think her value has went up or down since the kanye west divorce answer that question honestly up is i the would answer. say it stayed the same it's up Okay, more no. people are talking about the Kardashians now than they have for years because mm, I don't know of if that's Kanye. True. Oh, come on. No. They were waning in, in interest and you know it. Mm, I don't know if that's true. Look the ratings were down year after year. Look, no one look, cared. Ratings are down across the board. Look at what Kim Kardashian in just the last year and a half has been able to build with her Skims company. Like, but that doesn't make you talked about. I mean, good for her. She has one product that works. I mean, Kanye has Yeezys that's been working for years. It doesn't, one thing doesn't have to do with the other. I'm just saying they're in the business okay, of being fine. talked about and they're being Listen, talked about. Buffoonery aside, <laughs> some of Kanye's behavior has true real world implications that can severely negatively affect a lot of people, not even his own family, but over the weekend, <laughs> I'm not even joking. I'm being very serious right now. Over well, the the, I know you are. That's it's, it's hilarious no, listen, that you think you it means that I'm much saying. to people. It doesn't. It's entertainment. Over the weekend, he publicly named and shamed the school that his children go to. That he just said it's a godless school. Yeah. And he just meaning they don't teach religion. That's all that he said.
he put the school name and the school on blast. Right. Which and anyone that, could look up and find out where his kids go to school. I mean, that's not like something that's hidden. He's literally creating, drawing attention to this. Are you seriously going to defend this? You're like, I'm that's not defending not a anything. I just, you you're, you're making it big... sound like there's some implications here that are, 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 are negative. He said it's a godless if school, I... meaning they don't teach religion there. If I was a parent at that school, I'd be like, um, are you amping security up this week? For like, what reason? <laughs> he created a safety risk. How? By literally having this By crusade. saying the school that everyone knows is, look, there's like 10 private schools in Los Angeles. It's no, pretty not. easy there's to like figure 30. out. Well, for that grade, I'm saying. And I, there's I like think 30. it's- There's like 30. For that grade, private? Yes. Okay, yes. whatever. There's 30 of them. Not hard to figure out where Kanye goes to takes his kid to school. I mean, I'm sure you could Google it right now, and you could have last week. You're 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 a buffoon. I'm sorry. A lot of people are asking the question and drawing the parallel between Kanye and Britney Spears. The question is: Should those nearest to Kanye attempt to put him in a conservatorship? Why? I will answer this. No. <laughs> I was going to answer it. I'm going to say no. Of course not. The guy's not done anything that's a um, that's harmful to anyone. His kids, his family. He hasn't put his safety at risk. He's not putting other people's safety at risk. He's not. You know, he's not out there. He's taking Ubers everywhere. If he is under some sort of medication where he shouldn't drive, it, apparently he isn't. So, I mean, the guy seems to be. Outside of the the things that he says, he seems to be doing very responsible things, right? So, well, and building art on the outside of this, on the coattails of a family that enjoys this kind of publicity. I don't get what the big deal is. I really don't. I mean, it's a <laughs> big deal. It's what they do. Okay. This whole thing is what they I do, know. right? I, why aren't you just at least at least a, a entertaining the possibility? Because it goes back to what, what I do you mean said they about, would rather they would. It they goes all, back to what I. It goes back to what I said about Donald Trump and Kanye. You can't deny this. Kim Kardashian would rather have a peaceful, amicable split, separation, divorce, and co-parent in harmony with Kanye. Guarantee you that. I'd rather have lollipops rain down on me on Tuesdays. Big deal. Don't get involved with the Kanye West. That's. <sighs> Or, and, well, fine. Or, or, or the, turn it around. Don't get involved with the Kim Kardashian exactly. who just who j this is what she does. She exactly. literally is sleeping in the bed that she made. Is On the flip what I'm side, saying. don't get involved with Kim Kardashian, whose career is thanks to partly thanks to social media and then complain. Oh, I don't want my daughter on social media. He made yeah. such a big deal yet again about his daughter being on TikTok. Yeah, well, that look, you versus your kids, I think that's different. I think that's where the line is drawn. And that's where I'm actually Team Kanye. I don't understand why you're not Team Kanye. You don't want your kids on social media. And let's say you had a My partner that put your kids are on social media. They're but, on mine. That's the same thing that's going on there. Yours yours is not they don't have their own. It's not public. It's and, Kim's account. But listen, but here's the point I'm trying to make. If you had a partner and they didn't want your kids on there, there would be acrimony. It goes back to what you said. He knew what he was signing up for. Right, but he didn't sign. He didn't necessarily sign up to have his kids put on social media. There needs to be a line in the sand and it's kids. Well, unfortunately, though Kim Kardashian is now thankfully legally single, mm -hmm. they do not have a custody agreement yet formalized it's all informal at the moment so mm. whatever listen up kanye whatever is very important for you make sure you get it in writing if having your children at sunday service is very important for you make sure you have your children on sundays or at least sunday morning if keeping your kids off TikTok or all social media is very important for you make sure you get it in writing because mm -hmm. you might criticize kim kardashian and a lot of other people out there but i know her and she will abide by the law by what she's supposed to i mean she's even studying to be a lawyer if she agrees to something in court she will stick Why to are you 
you're so worked up about this. No one's debating any of this stuff you're saying. You're just you're screaming into the wind for no reason. I'm not that worked up. Yes, you are. Up. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> anyway, because you're such he, a preacher. Yeah, I am. Yeah, you should stop. And, and he keeps he keeps lying. Who cares what he keeps it's doing? Exhausting. Who cares? He's he's he not has... that exhausting to people that aren't that invested. Most people sit back way back in a chair and they they pick up on every ninth thing and they say, oh, that's interesting. Not shocking. Anyways, thankfully, Kim Kardashian had enough of Kanye's lies. And on one post a couple of days ago where he was talking about his children and being allowed to see them and yada, 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 Kim literally wrote, Please stop with this narrative. You were just here this morning picking up the kids for school. It's just part of his art, man. It's it, it's funny. Like I just I just <clears throat> think he's giving people what they want to be entertained by now, this nonsense. Now, on to the alleged text messages that Pete Davidson possibly sent. Kanye West. Tell everybody how wrong you are. Go ahead. First of all, <laughs> tell everybody what happened. It's better if you tell everybody what happened. <laughs> well, Booker sent them to me claiming that Kanye got these text messages from Pete Davidson. I'm like, I don't know if that's true. And I still don't know if that's true, but let's just assume they are real and true. Okay. Right. He sent a photo of himself and said, Oh, I'm in bed with your wife and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. There's only so many times, and I'm not here to, def I'm not, I don't even, I don't, listen, I don't fucking like Pete Davidson. I'm not even a Pete Davidson fan. Right. But I'm shocked and amazed and admire the restraint that he had because he's been poked and poked and poked and poked and poked repeatedly. And as I've said before, there's only so many times you can poke a bear before a bear is going to bite back. Mm -hmm. And that's what Pete Davidson did, but making even, him a participant in this as well. And part of the but, show to my but, point earlier in the but show, But even while biting back, he's, he did it with bite, but he also extended an olive branch. He also said, listen, let's meet up. Let's talk. <laughs> but Pete's doing this from the messages that I read that I don't know if they're, you know, like, I don't know that they're real either, but I mean, they're from his writing partner. That's what I was trying to tell Perez. He's, he, he laid out five reasons why they were fake. And I'm like, I don't think they're fake. Everyone's reporting that they're real, but, but I didn't um, see the, the caption. That's what I was telling you. The, the writing partner might've said, these are fake. I don't know. Yeah, no, he did. If I saw the <laughs> caption, that would have. It's mattered. just funny. You're, you're. It's like your, your level of being wrong is hilarious. To no, me. shut up. You're wrong most of the time. <laughs> no, I'm serious. I mean, this one's funny. Like, I literally went to him. I, I honestly went to Perez. Is like, hey, are you seeing this? Like, this is interesting. And by the way, I'm not watching. My girlfriend does because this is, you know, part of unfortunately what she has to do as well. And she's like, this whole Kanye thing going back and forth. I'm like, what are you talking about? She's like, these texts being sent via uh pete davidson's writing partner and it's his verified account and it's you know him going back and forth and so i tell perez i'm like this is wild and perez is like it's not real and then he then he leaned into it he well, gave you... me a five point presentation <laughs> why they are fake and i'm like hey man I, i'm not like picking a fight with you i'm just telling you this is happening and you're not covering this part which happens to seem to be the real part <laughs> It's just, it's, you're funny, man. It's just funny what you tie yourself to the wrong end of the truth and, <laughs> and, well, uh, and what's happening. Of, there's been a lot of fake Kanye messages going on. You're around, right. You're right. So you're right. it's true. <laughs> Anyways. Look, I, I appreciate you uh, be, uh, airing, on, airing on the side of caution for once, but um, it was just kind of funny that that happened. Anyways, despite all the drama, Kim Kardashian and Pete Davidson are going strong. They even went Instagram official. Mm -hmm. She featured him on her IG for the first time. And um, some people actually think that that, and even if it did, it's like Kim Kardashian. So, okay, some people think that that posting Pete on her Instagram triggered Kanye. Well, so what? She's not going to walk around eggshells 
because of what her ex might think. She needs to live her damn life. And that's what she's doing. Mm -hmm. And I think she's doing it in a respectful way and, you know, good on them. Speaking of Pete Davidson and that writing partner of his, he just got cast and is going to be starring in and producing Pete uh, a sitcom based on his life. So congratulations to him and congratulations to all of the Kardashians because their new reality show premieres next month on Hulu and they just dropped the trailer, which got a lot of people talking. Actually, here's something. You say everybody is over the Kardashians, right? No, but I said they're hotter than they've been in years is what I just said. Oh, okay. All right. When they dropped that trailer, I noticed something very inter- telling. Okay. On YouTube, it was number one trending. The hottest thing on YouTube when the trailer was released on the Hulu YouTube channel. Well, I mean, that, I'm not shocked. I mean, we are 30 minutes into this show and we've uttered no one's name but Kim and Kanye, which I'm sure is putting our listeners to sleep. But No, it's a lot to talk about. Okay. Anyways, uh, well, I'll try to keep it moving. Um, the trailer sucked, in my opinion. Oh, did you it watch did? It? Yeah. How could you have all of this drama and produce a shitty trailer? That, well, is there no Kanye? You do see him, I believe, if I remember. They talk about him. I don't. I think you saw him for a minute, but um, you could. That's the thing, right? You could have all this drama, but it's what you do with it in a trailer that matters. Yeah. For example. Th- towards the end of the like nearly two minute long trailer, there's a moment where we see Kim tell her family that Kanye told her now that they're splitting, that her career is over. That shit should have been towards the beginning. Yeah. (laughs) Like, why did you bury that? Uh, Also, we see Kourtney Kardashian and Travis Barker going to a fertility clinic, actively trying to have a baby. That was towards the end as well. It was... Well, I mean, if you're a fan, you're going to stick around. If, if it's two minutes, you're going to stick around to see what happens, I guess. But unless guess. you're just saying the very beginning was so light it, that it just it didn't was. have anything, it was no stupid. zip to it. It was, mm. it was the, the very beginning, like almost ruined it. And they keep using these drones. I'm like, I don't need drone shots. Like they're trying to make it fancy. <laughs> right. They're trying to make it like big and grand and shit. Anyways. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that was interesting to also see. That- I've already started not watching. It, it was also interesting to see that Courtney and Travis are actively trying to have a baby and are using IVF. And there was another follow-up trailer released where Courtney Kardashian revealed that the medication that she was taking for these fertility treatments sent her into mo- menopause, which I did not even know that that was possible. So they've hit a detour in their uh, journey towards having a baby. Speaking of Travis Barker, his recently turned 16 year old daughter, Alabama. Oh, shoot. Um, You okay? Oh God, I'm getting my dog. (laughs) Three times over the last week has shit inside my house so oh my god i have to go he's scratching the door and i do not want him shit let him again. out go let him out <laughs> and i can relate everybody because i have uh two new puppies now that we took in and uh they are the shyest that we've ever had and it's uh it's a lot of poop everywhere and pee everywhere because they just uh they don't get it <laughs> i do not clean shit well (laughs) i've cleaned up so much shit lately because i got two new puppies and um they are shy and poop machines i'll tell you but they're anyways back to travis barker his 16 year old daughter alabama Uh shared on instagram story that she was partying at 3 a.m on friday morning Mm -hmm. on a school night wow Friday morning's not a school night. No. Oh, you Thursday mean like Thursday night? Into, oh, okay. Well, gotcha. 3 a.m. is Friday morning already. You're right. Yeah. Well, that's still Thursday night to me. <laughs> if I was out, I wouldn't say it's Friday morning. I'd be like, it's still Thursday night. <laughs> I mean, maybe she didn't have school on Friday. But even still, like, 
I'm not going to let my 16 year old. Oh, be you and all these grand gestures of what you're not going to let not. your oh. kids say. Okay. You can't force a kid to sleep. Okay? Yeah, you but can't. I'm not going to let them be hanging out with friends at 3 a.m. Mm. on a Thursday or a Saturday well, or a Friday. That hopefully you can control. <laughs> Watch me. Uh huh. Uh, also, speaking of Travis Barker, his ex wife and mother of his two children, Shayna Mokler. She's been going through it, as we've talked about. She announced her pregnancy that she is expecting with her boyfriend that was arrested for domestic violence. Well, it seems like they have not broken up because she and that boyfriend were just spotted together in Rhode Island. All right. We're not even done with the Kardashians hmm. yet. They 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 also hoover because there's so many of them. Damn it. According to a lawsuit that Tristan Thompson's baby mama is pursuing, she revealed to the court that Tristan Thompson told her, the new baby mama, number three, mm -hmm. that he and Chloe were not only engaged but last year were set to be married soon. <laughs> he could have been lying or he could have been telling the truth. I'm yeah. inclined to believe he might've been telling the truth on that one. And he's like, don't fuck this up for me. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's like, it's crazy to me that he could tell, like I'm thinking of the woman, right? The baby mama number three, like that he could literally tell a woman this and she's like, you can get some of this now too. Like he must have magic dick power. Like, uh, why wouldn't a girl? No, no, does no, the girl have? Af, no, no. This was after he found out that the woman was pregnant while trying to convince her to have an abortion. Oh, okay. <laughs> He's like, "I'll pay you. Please don't right. do this. I'm, I'm, engaged. I'm engaged. I'm gonna so, have. I'm gonna so get So he could have lied to. So in her defense, he could have lied to her prior and said it's over. Like we're nothing anymore. Yeah. But but I'm gonna call bullshit. Like and say. Come on, you clout chasing fucking NBA dick hoover. Give me a break. <laughs> Give think, me a break. <laughs> I think we found the title of this episode. I, I don't think it's uh, debatable. It's either buffoon or dick hoover. <laughs> no, no, not hoover. It's just called hoovering. I got hoovering. it. I got it. <laughs> uh, also, in more Chloe Kardashian news, thankfully, it seems like she's truly finally done with Tristan Thompson. Unfortunately, she's got a new man that just raises a lot of red flags. According to reports, she's been linked now and was spotted hanging out publicly. Okay, I got to break it down for you all. She's been linked with Trey songs. Why right. is that problematic? Multiple women have accused Trey Songs of sexual assault. One hmm. even specifically said, he raped me. And he's dealing with the repercussions of that now and legal action is being pursued. Wow. So how, not all the time, but how often these celebrities work is when they start to date somebody new, they'll do it in private. And once they've hung out enough times privately, then they'll venture out into the world. So the fact that Khloe Kardashian ventured out into the world with Trey songs makes me think they've at least hung out a few times prior to that privately. And back in 2016, according to reports, six years ago, they already hooked up six years ago. So mm. they have a past. And they were spotted hanging out, I think it was Nice Guys, the Nice Guys or whatever. Yeah, this, this, yeah. yeah this spot here in Los Angeles, mm -hmm. just the two of them. They're boning, you know, they're <laughs> not just hanging out as friends. <laughs> and of course, you know, her family loves Chloe, but they have their concerns according to reports. So we'll see what happens. I have there. concerns. Like, why do you chase drama? Like, it's just, it's such a weird. We've talked about this. She yeah. has a bad picker. Yeah. I She's guess. got a bad picker. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, you, you see a situation like that. I don't care how good the dick is. Like, no, there's a lot of, there's a lot of dick out there you can fish for. I just don't, you know, I, I don't know anybody that 
has that kind of thing going on. You know what I mean? Pass. I'm going to move on. I don't need this drama in my life, but I don't know. No I don't know if it's true. It may not be true. Tears. No drama. <laughs> All right. Back to Kim Kardashian. Like I told you, this was exhausting. I'm exhausted. <laughs> I know. Kim Kardashian went viral for her comments about working women. I saw I'm this. sure you saw that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Kim said, quote, I have the best advice for women in business. Get your fucking ass up and work. It seems like nobody wants to work these days. And a lot of people were upset about that for many reasons. And the gist of what she said, I'm not offended by. No, no I think nor should a, anyone be. I think I mean, she just expressed herself poorly, though. Well, because no, I, I don't even think that's the problem. I, I wouldn't say she expressed herself poorly. I think if you're going to dish it, you have to be able to take it. And let's just note where she came from. Well, ultimate that's part privilege. Of it, yeah. yeah, ultimate privilege. But I still think even having privilege, you should be able to say the truth. And she is, I think, in my opinion, right. People are fucking lazy. They won't get off their ass. I mean, if you want to, you know, people would rather dream than do. And I think that that's, unfortunately, the, the thing about it is she helped create that, that whole mindset of dreaming into this, this fake kind of world because she's presenting this fake world to people constantly. So, I, I mean, I get people's agitation with her saying what she said, but, it, but, you know, she's got the right to say it. But as long as she can take it when she dishes it, I have no problem with what she said. So there's that. I, I, I still stand by what I said, that she did not express herself as well as she could have. Because I tell my kids every day, and I've said it on the podcast, I'm a huge champion of hard work mm -hmm. and work, 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 work. And showing work. up. Yeah. And being professional and all of those things. But... You know, uh, I would have, I, I express myself in different ways because I don't want to be dismissive of other people. Um, and there are people who want to work and, or get a different job or they're stuck in wherever it might be. So yeah. anyways, thank God we're done with the Kardashian Jenner West. All right, it only took 45 minutes. <laughs> Naomi Osaka, the tennis player, one of the top ranked in the world, has been very public with her um, self-care. I wouldn't even classify it as mental health struggles. I said, I said self-care and- yeah, I, I agree with what you just said, sure. And um, over the weekend, she was playing at a tennis tournament in Indian Wells, the same tournament where like nearly 20 years ago, some heckler, hurled racist insults at Serena Williams that imprinted on Naomi Osaka. She grew up watching that and was aware of that. Um, mm -hmm. And that triggered something inside of her when she was heckled at that same tournament over the weekend, somebody said to her, you suck. And I remember us on this podcast having similar conversations. I do not believe in heckling people. Like, I think when we were talking about- What do you mean? You just heckled me a moment ago. You called me a buffoon. No. Meaning, I think I think a few years ago, we were talking about Kris Jenner showing no, up- No, yes. A, yes, showing up and people- Yes. Booed. Yes. And I don't believe yeah. in that. Yeah. Well, you know, I believe if you pay money to see any sporting event, you can do anything you want, as long as it's not obscene. Wait, so you, you suck is not obscene. So you think that that's appropriate? If you're rooting for the other per person, sure. You suck is not, it's sports. It's uh, competition. It's one team, one person versus another. So yeah, if you paid to get in, you know, grow some skin. Like that's competition. I don't you know. think that's appropriate in tennis. Okay. I mean, maybe, maybe you know, it's appropriate I, I don't in think other it's, listen, sports. I, I don't endorse it. I don't think it's uh, nice even. 
but I think the expectation has to be there at some level that you're going to be heckled or rooted against, root against, rooted against, whatever that, <laughs> that, that, that's what I'm saying. I now, bet. if it's now, if you're, you know, you went all the way deep 20 years ago with some, something else that happened. I mean, she brought it up. She you're mentioned right. That's that. what I mean. It's just like, I, I would say it. to her, grow a pair. That's what I would say. Like grow a pair because you know, you, every time something doesn't go your way, you got to take it to, Oh, something else happened to someone else years and years ago. You're a competitor. Yeah, buck up, buck up. We have to remember that competitors are also humans. Okay. I, I'm, I'm not disagree. I wouldn't say it. I don't think it's, I don't know. I'm not going to say it's a, appropriate, but if you spend money, look, you have no couth if you're yelling something like that, especially at a tennis match. It's not really the place for it. All I'm saying is there is a reasonable expectation that it could possibly happen. Now, if you're taking it to the the ninth the nth degree with, uh, you know, that it's all of a sudden a racist thing or, you know, that's the, the trigger that went off, I would have to say buck up. What do you guys think? Call us 800-721-1185. Talking specifically only in the tennis world. Mm -hmm. Should hurling insults loudly in a tennis match be allowed or not? I'm you suck. Is that, you know, we're talking about. That a is specific... an insult. That's an insult. Yeah. Okay. I don't think it should be. A, I, I don't well, think I'm just a, I'm, I'm just being specific. I'm not I'm not debating whether it's an insult or not. I'm saying in this instance, you suck. I, I don't think it's classy either, but I think that there is a reasonable expectation of it possibly happening if you're rooting for someone else. It shouldn't. Tennis is usually I mean, using quiet. that golf. Using, same thing. Quiet. Using that argument, you know, there's a reasonable expectation that if you have a disagreement with a coworker, your coworker is also going to say you suck. But should that happen in the place of work? Oh, no. God. Every, oh, God. Who cares? Everyone's skin is so thin. God forbid people get their feelings hurt. Oh, 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 how will, we, how will we go as a society we need to not getting our feelings hurt? No, I better. think, well, listen, you can't control other people's ignorance or their lack of a vocabulary where they can't express themselves in a reasonable way. But when they yes, do, you, you can. can't, Learn you can't melt. You no, 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 you can't. You can't you control suck. other people. You can't. It's impossible. But so when it happens, you have to be able to, you have to have skin on you that's tough enough to say this person's a dope and it's not going to affect me instead of melting down like a little pussy willow because like oh dear god i was insulted hold on let me get on the phone and call my mom and break down in tears because that's what a lot of this generation does now that no one's got a skin anymore like buck up a little bit it's tough out there sometimes it's not going to go your way sometimes brush it off be bigger All right. i don't think that's i don't think that's crazy advice in other news, Jossie Smollett, the former Empire actor, was sentenced to four and a half months in jail or prison. I don't know. There's mm -hmm. a difference between jail and prison behind bars yeah. in Illinois um, and had a big outburst when he was sentenced, saying that he is not suicidal. And he repeated that, like insinuating that if I die... I was murdered. Um, Here's my take on that guy. Wacky actor, you know, just eccentric as could be. Um, his state of mind is, I, I don't know. He's on a different level. He's on a different plane of something that's not <laughs> on a realistic uh curve of normal uh behavior i think i i don't know if that i don't know what that means but he just is he's different um that's 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 accurate listen i always try to be sensitive when talking about racial things and it is a given that people of color are incarcerated way more than white people you can't debate that. It's not yeah. even debatable. Yeah. Um, however. Yeah. There's a big however in this one. <laughs> yeah. However. <laughs> yeah. 
when you look at the Jesse Smollett situation and people were saying he does not deserve incarceration for that, he didn't hurt anybody, it was not a violent crime, I need to remind you all of somebody named Lori Lachlan, who also served months in prison for a non-violent crime, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. Who also, like Jussie Smollett, denied culpability up until the very last minute, and then eventually she did switch around, mm -hmm. but not Jussie. As he was being let off, he said- <laughs> He's got the fist up in the air yeah. and <laughs> he said i'm innocent i could have said i was guilty a long time ago but i'm innocent and wrong it's like dude it's on video <laughs> they got you but the whole thing is just uh it it just goes back to what i said some actors are wacky and i believe that in their minds they believe in this narrative and i guess that's why the law or or not the law but when a judge sentences someone it's why it can be different for different people i mean this guy had every opportunity to back out of this instead he wasted thousands and thousands of dollars and hours uh, of people's time and energy and and at the end it's like if you think about it this guy lied about something and he's in jail for six months if, if you just said that i i Four think i well, okay fine if you just said that, I would have to say, man, that seems kind of unfair. But when you unpack how long this went on for and how deep Years. he dug, Years. how deep he dug into this lie and and made the sis and taxed the system the way he did, what is a judge supposed to do? You're like, look, I don't think this guy should go to jail all this time for this, but. He's, ta I mean, I can't let everyone in the world know that this is okay. So whether it's fair or not fair, I, look, I'm not a judge. I don't know, but I, I do understand. I'll just put it that way. I never watch courtroom stuff, but for some reason, I watched the live stream of the sentencing hours of it. And I'm like, did oh, you? I was riveted. <laughs> it was like, shit, I'm engrossed. Anyways. <laughs> I didn't even know you could watch a stream of that. That's pretty cool. Yeah, this local NBC station in Chicago was like, streaming it uh, oh. on their website. Anyways, since being put behind bars in a Chicago jail, um, he's been placed in the psych ward. And for some reason, his family is upset that he's in the psych ward. The Cook County Jail made a point of reminding everybody that they are not holding him in solitary confinement. In right. fact, they say, quote, the use of solitary confinement was abolished at the Cook County Jail in 2016, and any claim that he is being held in the manor is false. So I would think him being in the psych ward is a good thing. Making it could sure be a cushier situation, to be honest with you. So I'm so, glad that they came out and said that, because yeah, I, I think you, I, in your mind, I think it's logical to think, oh, they're sticking him in the hole by himself, and that is <clears> really, uh, I'm sure, tough on anyone. So... All right. Well, in other news, Cardi B was supposed to start filming a movie this week. She was going to be the lead of this Paramount film, a comedy that was kind of like a play on Sister Act. Uh -huh. And literally a week before filming was going to begin, she dropped out of the movie. Wow. And the excuse that was made public was she was overextended okay that just seems very unprofessional to me yeah wow and does not bode well for her future in acting which is a real missed opportunity because look at Nicki minaj without comparison the most talented female rapper of all time way more talented than, than cardi b but her hit days are over and that's just the nature of the music industry. You know, Nikki would be smart to like pursue acting if, if she wanted to make more money or whatever. Maybe she makes enough money, who knows? But I don't know, I, I was alarmed and disappointed in how that all went down with Cardi B. In <laughs> other news that's wacky, Bella Hadid is on the cover of Vogue magazine. <laughs> and the you know model- I love this. <laughs> the model- revealed a few things, but one of the most startling revelations is that when she was 14 years young, she got a nose job. 
two things. One, obviously her parents paid for it and Mm -hmm. supported that, maybe even encouraged it or pushed for it to happen. And two, what fucking plastic surgeon performs a nose job on a 14 year old? I think that happens all of the time on a 14 year old yeah i i i, I Is hate your to say nose it. even done growing at 14 probably not but maybe your nasal passages are i, I don't know if there's any you know and it was um, and I repercussions specify, to it it was for purely aesthetic purposes it wasn't for the ability to breathe better or anything <laughs> like that i think there was that no happens deviated a lot. septum here <laughs> i just think it happens at a lot. 14 yeah, I, 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 I really do. At 14? No. Yeah. I'm serious, man. I think, there I think should it be happens some, a lot. There should be some law. Honestly, I think there should well, be Well, can a I law. ask, you know, did they live here at 14? In Los Angeles? Yeah. Oh, they did. Okay. I didn't know if they, because they're from another country, right? The Hadids? No. Oh, I thought that they were, I, I literally thought they were from another country. I mean, the father is from another country and the mother's from another country, but they were But they're born not. They grew and, up here. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that there should be a law that you cannot have any cosmetic procedures until you're 18, personally. Like, just wait till you're 18. Then you can do whatever you want. <laughs> and even I then- I don't get involved with telling people what to do. If you're 14 and you think your nose is hideous and you want to change it, I have no problem At with 14, that. no. Uh, I, once again, I'm not foretelling people or parents what they should do with their kids. I think there's a lot of. I'm saying go for it once you're an adult. <laughs> well, listen, if my kid wants a nose job at 14, ain't happening. Your kids have the cutest noses ever. What are you talking oh, about? Thanks. <laughs> Maybe I, I'm still but, really you know, shocked that, uh, that, that uh, a surgeon would do that at 14. I, I'm not. I'm just not. No. And when if they want to get a nose job when they're 18 plus, yeah. you're going to pay for it too. <laughs> well, b- back to the story for one second. So Perez and I, we've been doing this show for so long. Seven that ye- years. Oh that, my God. That literally, it was years ago, Perez called bullshit on her because she said she hadn't had a nose job in the press. And Perez straight up was like, that's bullshit. Okay, here's the picture. <laughs> It was great. So I love when the when the story comes full circle on our show. You know, we and love you were willing being to say. Right. I mean, Matthew McConaughey was the same thing with the hair plugs last week, which was or whatever that was. That was fucking hilarious to me. You're like, it's just not true. Uh, <laughs> all right. Speaking of Bella Hadid, her friend Haley Bieber, Justin Bieber's wife, had a very scary incident. She was rushed to the hospital after experiencing stroke like symptoms Mm. um she ended up uh, uh, i don't even know i guess they must have given her a cat scan or something and they observed or or told her that she had a small blood clot in her brain Mm. that passed on its own and she's allegedly better now she's just 25 years old though Mm. and um must have been a very scary moment some sad news also Nick Cannon, his talk show has been canceled. What a shock. I liked it. I thought he was really good. He's natural and a pro. I I think he's natural, but the show is just awful. I liked it. I thought it was good. I watched Mm. clips. I mean, I don't watch, watch, but. (laughs) I I watched it a couple of times because it was just left on at work. I'm like, this is terrible. terrible. Really? I mean, I don't know. I mean, it's not that he sucks. It's just the show sucked. You know what what I mean? Like there's a difference. Like. Him on Wild and Out makes sense. He, he, he fit in with that. But him trying to do this daytime talk show well, host Give me more thing. specific. Was I'm, he a I'm, bad I'm literally giving you more specific. Him trying to do this daytime talk setting setting uh, and trying to sell it to me just didn't print. I, I, it didn't feel authentic. It didn't. It just didn't didn't work. Uh, and apparently networks and viewers agree. So, you know, like I said, he's, it, it's not against him. Awesome on America's got talent. Awesome on wild now, terrible on the radio and not good on this show. That's my assessment of Nick Cannon. Oh, well, Amanda Bynes is doing some self-improvement. She's getting rid of that face tattoo that she got of the heart. So good on her. Tom Brady is returning to the NFL. He wants to go out with a win. I got to respect that. You want to go out on a high if you can. If you feel you got one more in you, why not? So Mm. 
Uh, good on you. And finally, I cannot believe, well, A, it's a bad thing that it hasn't really been making a lot of news. And B, I can't believe I had not asked you about this until now. Hmm. Have you watched any of The Bachelor this season? Not a frame. Are you done with that show? You're done with it? I'm Why? out. You used the to show love the was, Bachelor. It's just not good anymore. It's, I, I, I don't know, unless I'm missing something. I like Chris Harrison. I like the format. You know when something's good and then and they fuck with it and they just change it and they, you know, change for change sake and all of this other stuff. And this the storylines got too convoluted. It just, it became too much. I need a break. I'm not saying I'll never go back, but you know, they had the two hosts there for a minute. I, it's Jesse Palmer now, right? I didn't even, I, I didn't catch a second of him. Nothing against him. I'm sure he did an okay job. It just, I feel needs a break, a rest, go away and maybe let me miss you a little bit and then reintroduce it. That's what that franchise needs. Well, there is something that just entered my consciousness. There's apparently drama with some other girl, Susie. Like, I don't even know. I was just curious if you were watching and if you had well, any thoughts. No, and it's, it's the whole, it's the whole social media of the world of the contestants now. They're following and what how they're trying to brand themselves. They've just got a bunch of pukes on it. They just have people that are sort of, you know, Kardashian wannabes that everybody's just doing it for the business and what they're gonna well, do next. that's always been the case. Okay? Well, not really. In the early days of the show, there wasn't oh, social media. No, 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 there wasn't social still media. Wanted, they still just wanted to be on TV, most can't, of them. Can't debate you on that. You're 100% right. But the level of me being nauseated by it and them participating in it, even after the fact, takes away from the idea of, you do have to suspend disbelief a little bit when you watch, but at the end and the core and why you're there is you're like, I hope person A falls in love with person B. There is still the hope of that happening and it being um, as true as, thankfully, you know, as TV. Thankfully, could be. thankfully, we'll always have Trista and Ryan and... <laughs> And Sean and Catherine. Yeah, Sean and Catherine for me. I I didn't watch Tristan and Ryan. I wasn't on board by then, so I'm mm. sort of like uh, middle seasons kind of guy. But they were great, and I and you know I loved making fun of Sean, that big piece of meat. But he is uh, he was sweet, and and I and love I, sweet. I love but, me some Sean. Yeah, and when you but I but when I think back of that, I have fond memories. I don't have these internet pukes that just want. And it's even. And by the way, I'm, I hope no one thinks I'm just talking about the girls. The guys are just as bad. I mean, I think half the guys are faking their sexuality. I think a lot of these guys are like not even like heterosexual. They just want to be on fucking TV, you know? Wow, yeah. interesting. All right, before we get to calls, a brief reminder. After our calls today, my interview with Dr. Drew. All right, let's do some calls. Hey guys, it's Claire from LA. I just had to ask because it's literally the best thing I've seen all day. Kanye West. <laughs> And Pete Davidson's text, um, I just don't even know what to say. It talked I think about it's it. so funny. And I think it's good that Pete finally stood You're up to Kanye because it was weird that he wasn't saying anything and not defending his girlfriend. But on the other hand, I can kind of empathize with Kanye because he was just throwing it in his face that he's like in bed with his wife. I don't know. I just kind of wanted to see what you guys' thoughts were on the whole situation. Obviously, it's kind of funny. But, yeah, I love the show. And oh, It is funny. And yeah, they're providing and entertainment. You're a buffoon. I don't think she's a buffoon. I think yes, there's you a are. Certain, yes, you do. No, no, no. I think the people that are overly invested in this, you enter, a, a, there's a line you cross, and it's buffoonery. That's what I'm saying. Anything we talk about is arbitrary. I'm not like, this is stupid. This is dumb. I'm not. To be invested right. at a certain level is buffoonery. So let me make that crystal okay. clear. I'm here talking <laughs> about it too, okay? I think this stuff's fucking interesting. I always have, and I like his take versus my take. But to be so invested in it, come on now. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Um, take another call here. Hi guys, it's Brianna from Northern California. I called a few months ago and 
obviously listener from the beginning, loved Perez for years and years. Chris Becker, mm-hmm. you're okay sometimes. <laughs> okay, so this is where I'm at. It's Friday, March 11th at 11.38 p.m. Pacific time. Kim Kardashian posted a picture of her and Pete. Talked Elmer about it. In the hallway. I'm like so upset. I guess I just felt like maybe it was a put on this whole time. And with Courtney and Travis, I felt like she completely changed her style. And now she's dressing all these punk clothes and black things and whatever. And so I felt like Kim Kardashian was doing the same thing with Pete. And now that I've seen those photos, I'm like totally upset now. I love Pete Davidson as fucked up as he is. And now that he's with Kim, I'm just like bereft. Anyway, love you guys. Bye. <laughs> you see, look at that. The first two calls have both been about the Kardashians. So uh, even though we spoke about them for a long time today, it's what our listeners and viewers want. Yeah. I, I do think it's interesting the kind of points she makes at the end. Pete Davidson has fans and he had fans going into this. His yeah. stand-up fans, whatever. Uh, he's of that age. He's, you know, Jen, whatever, Z, sort of millennial. I don't know. He had fans. I'm wondering what this does to It his... only helps. Just well, like the Ariana Grande relationship only helps. Well, no, it only helps this. But does it help oh, it a helps career? Him. Okay. Yes. I mean, as a stand-up, I guess so. Because, yes. But as an actor, I'm wondering yes. if this... I don't know. I disagree it with that It makes him more of a household name. Absolutely. I, I don't know if I agree with the acting part. Absolutely. I don't. I, I well, think at wrong. some point you... When you associate yourself with something so much you can't suspend disbelief because pete davidson as i talked about towards the beginning of our show isn't ever really gonna play non-pete or hasn't played non-pete davidson parts right so it's Mm -hmm. not like he's a serious actor where his personal life is a distraction does that make sense I i mean i guess i get that point of view but i'm wondering if he wanted to grow out of that and he wanted to he's not going to be able to i think is what i'm trying i guess is what i'm presenting to when he wants to he's not at that point in his career yet i mean look at jim carrey Jim Carrey didn't get to that point in his career until well in like a decade plus into his career. Jim Carrey's one of the funniest people that's ever walked a planet though. But then he he got to a point where he's like, I don't want to just be funny. I want to do more. And he got to that, but it wasn't, it wasn't early on in his career. Okay. One more here. Hey guys, I'm listening to your latest episode and everyone's calling in to talk about the Kanye thing. And I'm just so shocked that this is even a debate. He is an artist, he is a musician, he's referencing something personal within his music and his art, and that's that. He's not making a threat, it's art, it's music. If all celebrities, artists, musicians, etc., did not reference They did make a life, threat in the other song. We'd have no movies, we'd have no music, we would have no artistic commentary. End of debate. Well, okay. and, he did make a threat in the other song. Well, I, so I could be... Pete Davidson's ass could mean beat him in checkers oh, too. Shut That's up. not really shut a deba- up. I mean, come shut on. Shut up. Now. All right. <laughs> we all your, know your skin has gotten your skin has gotten too thin. Hold well, on one second. Hold on. Wrong. You're just no, so I'm not. <laughs> I'm not gonna let you go let me on. ask you one question. If who okay, me beat Pete Davidson in a game of chess, no, please. No, 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 no. Me versus you versus Kim Kardashian, the failed lawyer, the failed. Can't pass the bar. Who do you think out of the three of us knows the most about the law? She. Right, she. exactly. That was a trick question and you answered it properly. She does. I'm going to ask you one question. Then why the fuck hasn't she done it? Because hasn't she knows she it's what? insane. Taking any of this to a judge and said, oh, these are threats. Why? Oh, because she doesn't want to. Because she doesn't, oh, because she doesn't want to. You're saying she should. And this is, you know, a judge would hear this. No, no, no. Oh, no, no. You said she should I take this to a she, judge. No, I yes, never you said she should. I did not say she should. No. I'm going to, this is what I'm going to do for you. Find me the fucking clip. I'm I going to, not, I no. hate that I have to do this because I don't have time. But don't do it. I'm going to go back say, and I'm no, going to find, didn't. I'm going to find the quote and I'll tell you the quote I even remembered in my head. You said she should take no, the, I did not uh, to a judge. That. Okay. Well, everybody, you're that. about to hear the clip of Perez saying it next. I hate that I have to go back and find don't this, do but it. you're about don't to hear it. Don't waste your time. <laughs> okay. I will just, but when I do, are you going to say I'm wrong? Or are you going to say something well, like you manipulated it? Because I'm not going to. 
wrong of, about I'm not, this than my memory. I've got three kids. I've got parent brain. See, but I, he's already digging a hole. No, you said she should take whatever. it. Whatever. Anyways, what you said. I would rather get the clips for this week's show than you wasting time finding another thing. Well, All right. that's that's going to be very hard to do on Wednesdays. I'll just tell you that. Uh, very hard to do. All right. Well, we'll okay. I'll get it. <laughs> Dr. Drew, unlike Dr. Phil, is actually a real doctor. Board certified. Yes. So he gave me and us great insight that I'm happy to share with you all. And it was a very wide ranging conversation. He's a pro, love him. Check out our interview with Dr. Drew. Hello everybody, a man who needs no introduction, Dr. Drew, who thankfully is not running for office anywhere right now. No. Although like Dr. Oz, is that something that you would do in the future? Well, uh, I don't think so. To tell you the truth, uh, for us, I, I thought about it for a minute. I went so far. I did when, when things were such a mess. I, I'm so mortified. I, I, I want you to imagine you're a surgeon who has a very specialized ability to cure people with a procedure you can do. You know exactly how to do it. And your patients are strewn all over the streets and you're walking over them and they're dying at five a day. That's what I have to do every day in Los Angeles, it drives me crazy. And so I was trying to think of ways to, to deal with that. And for a while there, I was thinking about uh, running for office. And I went so far as to call former Governor Schwarzenegger. And and he, wow. it was a really, really interesting conversation with him. Uh, he said, but, don't do it. No, he said, do it. I was shocked. Oh, wow. I, I thought he tried to talk me out of it. I really did. But no, he said, do it. And I was like, wow. He goes, but you better you better be sure it's what you want to do <laughs> because, because it's, you got to feel in your, you got to feel in your gut. You got to feel in your gut. Well, I need oh. you. And I really okay. wanted to chat with you today because Good. you need me. I do. Okay. This actress posed a really interesting question or, 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 or Kanye West has okay. <laughs> been dominating headlines yeah. for the last As few he... weeks, especially. As he tends to do. As right. He to do. And what's what's interesting is Kanye has never said himself that he has any mental health issues. Really? His, Didn't he talk about taking medication? Well, he never he never he didn't said, give a specific, this is what I was diagnosed right. with. Right. He didn't give a specific diagnosis, yes. but he's talking about medicine. His, Kim Kardashian did say that Kanye was diagnosed with bipolar, but that's not something that he said. Right. In fact, what Kanye did say was he People said that I was crazy and I don't believe them. He didn't just, he didn't agree with the doctors. Right, right. Well, um, that's, that's typical, by the way. You're, yeah, you're a doctor, condition. I'm not. But I would imagine what would be yeah. best for Kanye is if both the media and the public ignore him. You know, because he's- As, he, he's as a, is the case, I mean, I think, I feel like we had this conversation about- you know, I swear to God, you and I had this conversation about Britney Spears, though, was about a different Britney person. Spears, about Britney Spears and about, um, oh, crap. Uh, how can I forget her name? She went to Greece, opened a club. Lindsay Lohan. Lindsay yes. Lohan. We had the yes. same. We had the same conversation about her. Yeah. The question is, when you have somebody who is such an A-lister like Kanye, yeah. who yeah. is so media savvy, who yeah. knows what he's doing and wants attention, yeah. is it the responsibility of the media and or just fans to not engage? I, I mean, it depends what you mean by responsibility. I mean, I mean, they, they, they are certainly not accountable to Kanye West, though they need to understand they may, might hurt him, harm him. And as such, they should at least think about, which nobody does in social media, right? In any media, what, how they're going to feel if he is destabilized because of the way they report about him and the fact that they give him attention that maybe he shouldn't have. I, I, I don't know quite what to do with that. I, I really don't. Um, I, I really don't because ultimately it's on Kanye. Let's face it. It's up to the individual to get proper treatment and to maybe not engage with the press, but I don't, I can't imagine Kanye doing that. I mean, he's, that's who he is, right? That's who he's been for a long time. 
if somebody has like you know hardcore bipolar and well, has what, like mm-hmm. manic episodes or whatever right can you ride through that can you get better can you yes not deal with the the cause of whatever it does to you with, without medication like uh well you you can there's not i mean some people are sort of lucky but you're always at risk of spiraling in one direction or the other and and the bigger problem is what usually happens is people develop what often happens anyway. I'm not usually, I can't, I don't know that for sure, but often I see people get sort of chronically hypomanic. And then over time, they develop this syndrome that I would call sort of a burnt out bipolar disorder. They're kind of, they just aren't, they're just sick. They just aren't properly kept. They're, you know, they're just, they're just, I don't know how to describe it. It almost looks like somebody has been doing drugs for long periods of time. And they usually are extremely irritable and they've burned everybody out in their life and they suffer. They suffer. So even people that are kind of skating along, if it really goes unattended, if it's true, if it's bipolar one, that is again, bipolar two, a lot of people live with bipolar two for long periods of time. A lot. Uh, Captains of industry, politicians, a lot of bipolar two there. A lot. They're hypomanic, but they don't ever become manic. Thankfully, um, Demi Lovato, yes, who um, had a near-death experience, mm-hmm. I worry about her. To, seems to have come through the other side and realized that this California sober lifestyle um, wasn't working. Good. That's great Demi. news. That is great um, news because I, the thing about the thing about you know recovery is you have to let people. You have to let people do it their way. They have to prove it to themselves. This is one of the uh, difficult challenges in, in, in um, coaching people in sobriety or treating them is that they, they often have to go back and do it their way. And, uh, you know, it's been documented many times before. It doesn't work. It just does not work. If, if particularly when you have life-threatening disease like, like uh, she did. What I wish for Kanye is the moment with, that I'm observing with Demi right now, where, you know, Demi's just kind of been boring for a month or two. But yeah. I think boring or like no news is good news. It means like they're living and 100%. not- 100%. Yeah, like not 100%. constantly generating all of these headlines. Yes, the, the way we used to tell people, say it to people is, you know, you need a simple life. If, you know, a big part of sobriety is leading a certain kind of life a life of service, a life of honesty, a life of accountability, and keep it kind of simple. The best example of that in in the public, uh, you know, sort of a a celebrity area is Robert Downey. Remember, Robert Downey tried to get sober, went to treatment, got hired for a TV show. What was the TV show with, uh, oh gosh, what's her name? She's now married to uh, Indiana Jones. Kate Uh, Capshaw? No, no, no. no. Oh, Calista Flockhart. Calista oh, right, Flockhart. Ali McBeal. Yes. He was hired to Ali McBeal and then yes. Beal, and then he relapsed and he did a try it again. He got a movie, he relapsed, and then he really hit a hard bottom and he went, that's it, that's it. I'm, I'm not contemplating going back to work. I'm going to focus on my sobriety. And he just dropped out for like almost four years. And when he went back, he went back only at the advice of his sober team. People said, all right, we'll watch you. We'll get, we'll get back slowly. We'll see. And um, and he made it back. And look at the tremendous miracle that, that is Robert Downey. And to me, that that's a, that is a story that people should point out how it's supposed to work. It's really inspiring because I mean, he even did jail time. Like he. Oh yeah. He, oh, no, was, he was in trouble. Yeah, he was majorly in trouble. Um, going back to Demi for a second, like Demi, Brittany thankfully has been kind of boring for about right. a few weeks. Right. <laughs> That's a good thing. We should celebrate boring. <laughs> yes, we should, my friend. Uh, yes, we should. So that unfortunately- not that interesting, though? I mean, she she worries me like crazy. I, I've talked to you about this before. I mean, I agree that she should be off her conservatorship. She, I mean, the, the, all you got to do is walk down the street to the patients I was talking about at the beginning of this conversation. There's, there's 50,000 people out on the streets that need conservatorships more than Britney Spears did. Plus, she earned her own money. She, you know, sort of proved herself. She, she deserved to try off conservatorship. That doesn't mean it's not dangerous. That doesn't mean it's not dangerous. Yeah. It is dangerous, and we'll kind of see how it goes. But she still deserves it. Is it common for, you know, people that either are in conservatorships or that have, you know, mental health issues 
which she does mm -hmm. to like cast aside family, multiple family members. And if so, you know, like, like her sister or even yeah. her mother, like, let's take the father out of the equation. Cause the dad seemed really awful, but yeah. is there a future where Brittany and her sister are able to reconcile? There is, uh, I sigh because I, I've dealt with so many families where a patient with serious mental illness gets it, gets angry and gets it in their head. The family's out for them and whatever. And it, it's very disruptive. Um, my goodness, I've seen some just horrible, horrible situations. But usually, well, I, I, don't, I don't know this what's going to happen with Brittany, but usually what happens is they unravel badly, get treatment, stay with treatment, and then are sort of back with their family again. Well, at least thankfully, she seems to have this nice fiance, hopefully nice. I don't really know, <laughs> only she does. And, and right. I'm actually shocked that she isn't pregnant yet because I really thought for sure that she was gonna get pregnant right away because I know that that's what she wants. And How old I, is she now? How old is she? 40. So maybe it's not that easy. It, um, not maybe it's definitely not that easy at 40 now and she may not even be possible i mean who knows right does taking hardcore or not, I, don't even, I don't know if it's hardcore but like is does like bipolar medication or schizophrenia medication all of these things if you take that for over a decade does that affect fertility no but okay. but they can be some of the medicines depending on which one you're on can be problematic during pregnancy so they have to come off or adjust or whatever it, it can be very very challenging you still are involved with the Teen Mom Show, which has been on the air for such a long time. Oh, like almost 12 years. Can you believe that? It's wild. It's wild. I was thinking about it today. I was watching. I, You know, we're doing a thing now where we actually bring the young and pregnant women or girls now into the Teen Mom. I don't know if you saw the last reunion we did, but we had it was the the OG girls and they brought in, you know, four or five uh, young and pregnant and I was so impressed. And so I didn't know if it was going to work. And I was so pleased with the with the teen mom women, because to a person, they said, look, I didn't realize it. I was a mess. I had serious, I had significant psychiatric or, me or medical, however they'd say it, mental health issues. And I got treatment and you should get treatment. Please get treatment. It really helps. And I, every single one of them, I thought this is this is a great message and, and good. Hopefully oh, they will. I love that. Yeah. And I'm curious, you know, behind the scenes, does MTV do anything to help? Them? Oh, yes. Oh, my God, yes. Um, I, I cannot. They've never not stepped up. Leah, Janelle, even Farah, they tried to help. I mean, and they, they you know, they're, they're, you know, these were young people. Uh, and it, early on, it was, you know, we were really, I was very concerned. I wanted them to be handled extremely carefully. And, and they did. They really did. Uh, you know, you could argue, you know, should they have been on TV? Is that okay? I mean, people, this is the whole area of consent is, I just wrote a book on it with my daughter called It Doesn't Have to Be Awkward, is is challenging when people are, are young. Um, we got, we, people take issue with that with celebrity rehab all the time, but I'm here to tell you, those were all adults and they were consented for weeks. They're, everybody was consented. I mean, extensive consent. So people understood what they're getting into. And I think for the most part, people kind of do understand what they're getting into if, if when cameras show up. What can I do where my job is social media mm -hmm. to feel like I am not so much of a social media addict? And I would imagine that social media addiction is something that a lot of people deal with now. I know. Especially young people. Like, I, I wish I didn't have to be on social media as much as I am. I but know. I, it's my job. I have no doubt. It, it's not a healthy place. I, I believe that we're going to be looking at this thing the way we think about tobacco now. I'm holding up my iPhone. I, I think allowing access, young people access to that will be considered insane in some day. In terms of having a having a, a career around it. I mean, the key is not to let it consume you. And, and, you know, the algorithms are always trying to pull you in, right? So you're, you're, you're working with an addictive um, chemical, essentially. And so you have to be very careful. You have to take breaks. You have to make sure it's structured. You have to make sure you're sleeping right, eating right. That's not interfering with your relationships. And it's hard. It's hard. And I'm sure every time you put it down, you feel like I might be missing something. Yeah. What do you do? for self-care do I mean, you must right that's like oh, the yeah. keyness, right 
I, I went to therapy for years, years and years and years. It was, it was fantastic for me. Um, and really made me much more effective as a practitioner too. I mean, I, in terms of being able to help traumatized addicts, I, I, I'm much more capable of, of being present in a, in a very full way without being overtaken by or needing to rescue people and all the old stuff I used to do early in my career. Um, also, I try to sleep. I, you know, I, back when we were doing Loveline, I never slept. <laughs> And back when I was, a, you know, I was a severe workaholic and you could still argue that I am, but I really don't think I am. I think I'm in remission, but I used to struggle to get home. I used to leave at 530 in the morning and struggle to get home at 10 at night. And then Loveline sort of kicked in. So I was forced to come home at like six or seven. And then I'd go back out again at nine and I'd work till midnight and then get up again at six. And I did, that was my schedule for 15 or 20 years. And that was oh, wow. insane. That was insane. And, you know, during the decades of you, you know, having the, I don't know if you consider showbiz your day job or your night job, uh, but it's one of your main jobs. It, it wasn't, it really, it really was until 2010 that I admitted to myself that I was doing media. I, I swear to you, I was like, look, I'm just practicing medicine. Cause I, I had like four jobs in medicine, essentially. I was you know, I ran the medical services in a psychiatric hospital, then I ran their addiction services, and I had an outpatient medical practice and an inpatient medical practice, which was largely intensive care early on. Uh, and I, I was actually gonna be a cardiologist, but got sort of derailed on the psychiatric stuff. And uh, uh, yeah, I didn't want to be bothered. I, I just let me just let me practice medicine. And I'll like when we when we did a love line on MTV in the late 90s, I just said, look, I, I can give you Friday afternoon from noon on and Saturday afternoon from noon on. That's it. Otherwise, I don't have it. I'm, I'm working the rest of the time. And they fit in four shows a day into that window uh, back then when we didn't, Adam and I didn't know any better. Wow. Yeah. What would you say is like the key to, you know, sustaining a, a career in entertainment is really hard. Is there is there a trick or something that helps or... <laughs> Is there a trick? Um, what can I do to help sustain? The, the trick The trick is to be sure you have something, that you're trying to do something. You know what I mean? I, I always am trying to do good. I'm trying to, you know, originally it was AIDS that, you know, we weren't even calling it AIDS yet. It was still just being called careers. I mean, that was the reason, that's what motivated me to do Loveline. No one was talking to young people about that stuff. And I thought, geez, I, I've got to do this. And, uh, and then it was, you know, drugs and alcohol and trauma and was motivating me. And then it's sort of, as time went on, I had these opportunities that were sort of a, a creative nature where I could try to find ways to do good and deliver information and have something impactful in a positive way. And that was really, that was about 2010 where that started happening. And then that's when I admitted to myself, okay, you're officially in the media. It's okay. You, you've done, you know, 30 years of medicine, whatever that was then 25 years of medicine. You can, you can admit that you're in media. It's okay. Cause I was always sort of reluctant to even admit that I was in it. That's why I used, didn't never use my last name. I, I didn't want to be, I didn't want to be seen as promoting myself or anything. And then after having had all these extraordinary experiences, I thought, I almost thought I have an obligation to use this skill and this thing. I'm this, these experiences that I'm so grateful for to try to do something good. So that's one thing, make, make sure you're, you know, you know why you're there. And the second thing is keep, putting one foot in front of the other. I, I don't know how to say it more clearly than that, because there will be so many times when you're knocked flat that you just got to get up and just, just start moving, start moving forward. Uh, because it always, it always morphs and changes. And that's sort of a good philosophy for life. Generally, uh, don't, don't let anything destroy you. Uh, uh, failures. Yeah. People are very glib about failures. They're just another learning opportunity and stuff. It's not quite that way in media, I'd say. You can, you can get hit hard and seem to be destroyed. But if you keep moving forward and you know why you're moving forward, it's going to be okay. Something, and I would say happen. you're still pretty much a workaholic. How many podcasts do you have now that you do? How dare you? How dare you? And secondly, how dare you? Uh, so I do one by myself over at Corolla's platform. I do three a week with Adam. Uh, so it's Adam and Drew. I do a streaming show that my wife produces uh, three, four days a week, uh, uh, weekday afternoons. And then I have this show called After Dark, which is on uh, Tom on your mom's house platform with Tom Segura and his wife. 
And that has been very, very popular. That, that's sort of the new incarnation of Loveline. It's sort of a new version of that. So what's that platform called? Your mom's house, Tom Segura and Christina P, your mom's house. I had not heard of it. Oh, it's and is it just popular. there or can people also watch it on YouTube or? YouTube, Stitcher, go to my website, drdrew.com. Uh, it's all there. My streaming shows are drdrew.tv, but all the pods are at uh, drdrew.com. And, uh, and it's been a lot of fun. I mean, it, it's it, it, people are just as confused as ever, even with the it's different because people have the Internet, you know, they, they have the information at, at hand, but they still don't know quite how to use it or what to do with it. And still have lots of questions. And strangely, kind of be, because they sort of hit the wall at a certain point, the questions, you, you know, you know, they exhaust the Internet in terms of their ability to answer certain things. So the, well, the questions are more extreme. They're more intense. But Maybe also, the, you know, if you look enough, you can find the answer that you want, which may not always be the well, correct that, answer. That's right. And so they they don't know. It's, ex it's exactly what we all feel in relation to media right now. What do I trust? What's the truth? How I feel that way every day, trying to figure out what's real and what's not. What's going on in the Ukraine? I, I'm not sure. I don't know. I just watched the BBC for an hour. I, I think I figured it out. I, I don't know. I can't trust anything anymore. Okay, final words. If anybody watching right now is is just feeling sad, uh, what what would you tell those folks? Well, I would say who isn't right now. We've been through this ridiculous, horrible trauma that we was not only scary enough because of the virus, but we made 50 times worse with the way we treated each other, the way we locked down, the I just everything about it was a nightmare. And feeling bad is normal right now. I feel, you know, start with the basics, hungry, angry, lonely, tired, nutrition, you know, exercise, sleep, people around you, keeping people that actually care about you nearby. We need to go out and start thriving again. We need to live. Sometimes safety Uber Alice or survival, if you can't live, it's not, it's not very satisfying. So it's time to live. And I I've agree. Been, and I've been thinking lately, I'm, I'm not saying be heedless. I'm not saying that there's a certain amount of risk you you got to take living life. And, and there's a little more now because there's this oh. thing flying around, but you know, we've got, we've got Paxlovid and Molnupiravir. We have these great treatments now. So you really, if they get that distributed properly, you really won't have to worry about this thing so much. But in the meantime, this is the other thing, Perez. We have been so effing negative for so long. We have got to start rowing towards the positive pole. We've got to start doing and thinking and thriving in in a in in some the, the negativity's got to go. I don't know really know what I'm saying yet or how to do it, but I just know we have been way negative for way too long, and we got to figure this out and then find a way to kind of row together in in a in a in a, in a, in a satisfying direction where we all thrive. Well, I'm looking at the light right now and I like to be a positive person. Hopefully lighter days and brighter days and better days are ahead. I think Thank so. you. I right. appreciate you. Everybody Thanks, go to friend. Dr. Drew's website to check out where you can listen and watch and and, and cool. follow and, and support. And, and, and before you do, let me say, let's not be Pollyanna about this, Pollyanna-ish. <laughs> if you are having trouble functioning, if you are unable to eat, if you are you know, isolating, doing drugs and out of control. I mean, there are things you got to be assessing and realize you may need help. If you're thinking about hurting yourself, it's a very bad sign. It's a medical emergency. Get help. If you're using opiates, that's a deadly, deadly proposition. Get help. If you are feeling hopeless and worthless and you're having trouble functioning, get help. The rest of us are in a, are with you but we're still moving forward. We're still able to function and we're going to, we're going to get through this. And help is that, you know, help, help could be as simple as just talking to somebody. Well, not only that in this day and age, when we have all these, all these organizations have been creating mental health services through zoom and phone and it's working. I didn't know it would work. It is working. Take advantage of it. It's less expensive even than in-person stuff. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate you as always. Yeah. And we'll talk soon. Okay. Thanks for Bye. Bye-bye. That's it. Thank you to Dr. Drew for joining us. Thank you guys. And a reminder, if you haven't done it yet, going forward, 
please, please, please try to listen to our show on Apple Podcasts. And mm-hmm. please, please, please try to listen to us as soon as we release an episode as possible. We are fucking going to grow this. It's it happening. Perez. <laughs> and share, share our link, perezpodcast.com, perezpodcast.com. And you can call us at 800-721-1185. Have a great week, everybody. What, do you have anything to say? Well, I think if you share perezpodcast.com, it doesn't open an Apple. It, it actually, does now. I changed it, it. Oh, you changed it. I Good changed for you. It. <laughs> Good for you. After I, I was told. I was right, though, right? It used to open in like podcast on one. Yeah. No, okay. I used to do it to Spotify because I was trying to grow us on Spotify. Hey, now I, fuck that. Yeah, let's yeah, put it on yeah, Apple. Okay. Now I did. So now if you go to perezpodcast.com, it'll <laughs> they take got it. It doesn't Apple. matter. Goodbye, everybody. We love Bye. you. See ya. Thank you. <laughs>